The other day, I received a really important, really emotional and really complicated question that said this. LGBTQ people say that they were born that way. So why would God say homosexuality is wrong and then make someone a homosexual? Oh, I, to be honest, I always get nervous as a Christian trying to address issues of sexual orientation in a short video because as lots of you know, either personally or through a friend or family member, these are such, such important issues for our life, our relationships, our mental health, for our faith. But I want to try to tackle this as best I can. So let me say a few quick things and just encourage you to dig a little bit deeper. Um, on Time of Grace, we have huge resources where we try to cover this in depth, uh, little books like Gay and God, where you can dive into all the passages. But let me say these things. First of all, empathy. I think this question is exactly right that every LGBTQ person that I've ever met, they've never said, you know, one day I just woke up and said, I want to be a lesbian. I've always been attracted to this. I, I want to push a button and be attracted to, you know, I want to feel like I'm trapped in the wrong body today. I've never heard anyone say that. And because of that, I, I think Christian people should have an immense amount of empathy. Like, man, you didn't choose this, but you're living with this. Um, as we're about to see, this might be something you have to, you know, resist for a lot of your life by God's will. I, man, I've never had to deal with that personally. I've had a lot of temptations things in my heart I've had to battle, but that hasn't been one of them. But I have to imagine the difficulty of that. And so let's begin being quick to listen, being empathetic to that struggle. Uh, but now the question, so why would God say it's wrong if he makes us? Why would he make someone homosexual sexual, and then say, don't practice homosexuality? Well, we should probably establish the point with an open Bible. Does God actually say that? There's a lot of debate in our culture, even in churches, in our communities. Is homosexuality right or wrong? Once again, I'd encourage you to dig deeper with a resource like Gay and God. But I think if you just open your Bible today to a passage like Romans chapter 1, the answer would be pretty clear. Um, that God did create us for opposite sex relationships when it comes to romance and sexuality. And that gay relationships or lesbian relationships is not God's design for us. Once again, I know that's difficult. I know that's unpopular, especially if this is personal for you. But I do believe the Bible is from God, and I do believe that's clearly what God says. I dig into 1 Corinthians chapter 6, or I believe 1 Timothy chapter 1, and you'll find similar kind of truths that God has for us. But that begs the, the original question. Okay, if that's true, if this is wrong, and if I didn't choose it, if God made me this way, why would he say that's not okay? The answer to that question, and many questions like it, is actually found on the third page of the Bible. If you've read from the start of the book, you might know that in the beginning, God created. He created the heavens and the earth. He created the land and the sea. He created the fish in the water. He created the birds in the air. And he created man and woman. He brought them together in this relationship. There's the first marriage. Sexuality is given as a gift to this married couple. But if you make it to the third page of the Bible, something tragic happens that we call the fall into sin. That's where Adam and Eve make that terrible choice to do what they feel is right instead of what God had declared was right. And after the fall into sin, all kinds of terrible things happen from sickness and disease and death to hard work to broken relationships. But one of the most tragic is that the human heart would not be born good. We sometimes call this the sinful nature. You don't have to nurture a little child to be selfish or proud or angry, or violence. No, in fact, as every parent knows, you have to do a lot of work and a lot of training and a lot of correction to correct what was in their heart by nature. So after the fall into sin, the Bible teaches that we have sin within us. That's not what God originally created. We can't blame God that it's there. If you're going to be mad, be mad at Adam and Eve and the devil. But you and I have to admit, whether homosexuality is our reality or not, that what is within us by nature is not always good. I'm a married man, so I haven't battled same-sex attraction, but I definitely do have to resist the very natural desire to lust after women who aren't my wife, you know, to be totally faithful, to be humble. I, I don't remember picking like a day, like, I'm going to be so competitive that I'm going to be insecure when I don't, like, I didn't pick that, but it's within me. And so all of us in different ways, whether they're sexual or not, we have to battle what's in us by nature. We can't blame God for that. But I'll tell you what, we can look to God to help us with that. 
The gospel of Jesus Christ says that God is so good that even though we battle our own hearts again and again and again, whether it's with sexual desire or our relationships or our pride or our jealousy or our anger, God is so faithful that we can confess our sins to him and he's always there with the cross of Jesus. Some of you need to hear this. You think, well, I've, I've sinned two times, 10 times, a million times. It, it's still within my heart. God knows that. And he still says, by the blood of Jesus, you are purified from every sin. If same-sex attraction is part of your story, if, if you're battling with gender dysphoria, if you're trying to do what the Bible says is right, you need to know that God has unlimited patience for his struggling children. His mercy is new every single morning. And it might be a battle. You're going to have to fight the good fight like we all do in some form or fashion. But God's going to be there with his mercy and his grace. Finally, I pray that God's people are there for you too. I really lament how terrible the Christian church has been at helping same-sex attracted people for a lot of years. I, I feel like we're finally realizing how real this is for a lot of people. They didn't choose it and they don't feel like they can change it. And I just hope and pray today that we can be quick to listen to our brothers and sisters who are battling these desires, that we can be quick to pray and encourage, that we can be there to befriend them, love them. People just like everyone else, they're followers of Jesus like everyone else. Everyone who repents of their sin, whatever it is, and looks to Jesus is our brother and sister in Christ. So let's encourage each other to be strong, to fight the fight, to run the race, to honor God with our bodies, with our sexuality, with our obedience, and with our holiness. It's a great question. It matters so much to so many people. Maybe you're one of them. Maybe someone you love dearly. I pray today we can get back to the scriptures, especially the gospel of Jesus and the encouragement and forgiveness we find for all the hope and all the healing that we need today.